everyone. Welcome back to Children of Verte. We're so excited to have you today. Um, as usual, we're going to jump on over to Bad I Am uh, for our sponsors. First, we have Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Thank you so much for the continued support. You can grab an Electrum chest code on the overlay or bouncing around in chat. We also have Die Hard Dice, who has gifted our cast with, oh, we're getting to a couple of interesting ones here, Ooh. Mysterious Magic Marbles of the Moose. Oh, oh. I now. love it. I like that one. Moose marbles. <laughs> moose moose marbles. marbles. Magic marbles of the moose. You can get 10% off your order with the code Erte in the Die Hard store. And we're also giving away a $20 promotional gift code. Pay attention to the prompts and chat for that. And finally, Wait, tonight, magic moose marbles. Hold on. Magic is it marbles, marbles with a B? Or marbles with a V. Marbles. Mar marbles with a V. With a B. Okay. But All right. But magic, yeah. magic moose marbles sounds Ew. like someone's going to sell you moose poop uh, <laughs> so that you will, you know, for your cow or, you know, something like that. What, what, you know, I, I was trying to speed through this, but everybody <laughs> had to undermine this and start digging into it maybe a little too much um Magic this internet marbles. culture okay. that we live in everybody has to make something big of everything i just but want it's dice now cool it's a fun the moose. of the moose okay of the moose. Go. i'm gonna say um, moose marbles but you know moose marbles, <laughs> that's good. moose marbles yes so check out die hard thank you for that <laughs> continued support and finally, tonight, you'll hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. I'm Adam Bradford, CDO at Demiplane, and tonight I am playing Silas Sorrell, your dimensionally displaced magical superfan. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I'm awake and feeling good, and tonight... Yay! I know, mean, right? Tonight, I'll be playing Firza Armstrong, attorney at law, who is currently i think dreaming comparing the difficulty rating of steve's mine to Lorelia. <laughs> and, and what what conclusion have you derived i have not yet i mean i think there's part of her that's going maybe i just want to be back in steve's mind <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> fighting ice ice fairy monsters mm -hmm. in the middle of the night mm -hmm. yeah ah the simpler days <laughs> oh, uh, hello, my name is Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on the interwebs as at DreamWisp and sometimes streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Uh, tonight I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker Maeve Morgan Flynn, who has a new friend in, in her ring. <laughs> <laughs> Just hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content manager over at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on the socials or mostly at my website, lauren-urban.com. Tonight, I'm playing Carolyn Nebula Stern, who wants to see a flat dinosaur. <laughs> I'm very excited about flat dinosaurs. <laughs> and hello, everybody. I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on the socials at the Hope Lavelle. Uh, you can watch me be a dungeon master on Misfits of Alsetta. We've uh, for maybe tomorrow on Wednesdays. Uh, and tonight I am playing uh, Miss Robin Beckett, your favorite granny for hire. Yeah. Um, and uh, and every doll's favorite mama. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. So sad <laughs> for mama. We yes, we honor you, <laughs> baby dolls. Uh, everywhere. Um, <laughs> yes, and I'm Deb Ramble. I'm your storyteller for this evening. Um, thank you all for, for joining us and let's settle in for the 69th chapter of Children of Verte. Wow. So if you remember last time you had finally entered Lorelia. Um, things had gone terribly wrong. Uh, you fought off <laughs> you know, before immediately some mosquitoes, some spiders, um, you know, managed to travel through the, uh, the, the deep, dark jungle to find the river. Um, Pivim had informed you that in one direction are the swamps, 
uh, where Zola is likely to be, and the other direction is his uh, home, where his family is. Um, but he also warned you that there are some flat dinosaurs that are very territorial in this particular area, uh, and that you should be careful crossing the river. So you all decided to uh, take a long rest in the hut and have some personal time as well, which we experienced. In the morning, you saw Pivim standing right by the edge of the water there, and he turned to you and told you that he has a plan. <laughs> I like so, plans. So what you got? Yeah. Okay. Here's what I think we do. I think we go fishing. And he reaches over and you can see he's collected a pile of some sort of strange fruit. Um, and he launches it, throws it out into the water. And it takes a minute as the fruit kind of floats there. And suddenly this sort of flat, um, looks almost like a stingray, leaps out of the water, and clomps down on top of this fruit. And as it does, you can see it sort of floating along the top of this area. And then he throws another one, like another six feet beyond that one, and it goes and chomps down on that one. And you can see he's sort of directing this stingray, man ray. It is quite enormous, 10, 15 feet wide. Um, this sort of carpet of uh <laughs> of creature he can kind of direct where it goes he says i don't know what we can do with it but i think i can tell him where to go have you ever done this before Pivim? i got yeah i think i think you know when we were kids we used to do it with the little ones uh i figured why wouldn't it work with the big ones but we might need a lot of fruit so does, do those flat dinosaurs, do they only eat fruit or are they carnivorous? Oh yeah, they love, they love the, they love the meat. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, they'll eat anything. But you're saying that we can ride them like a surfboard. Oh, that's, I hadn't gone that far, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> what I was wondering was, can their heads reach around backwards? No, totally flat, flat, flat teeth. You know, you just so it's completely like a it's completely like a ray with the teeth on on the other he, side. So he brings he brings it. He he takes one of the fruit. He goes, okay, let me see. Hold on. He throws it like just like ten feet out from the shore, hoping he can you know. And what you see as it rears up is actually that it is like a pancake. It's like a flat stingray pancake, but the like ten feet of front opens up to like a 10 foot wide, thin mouth. Long, <laughs> narrow, thin mouth with just lots of little jagged teeth all the way along. And it just sort of opens and slams shut um, this wide mouth along the rim. Um, so it doesn't have a neck. It has no way to sort of maneuver back around. Um, it's just, a f it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Are these the flat dinosaurs or is, are there other flat items in the water? <laughs> this is the flat dinosaur. Good. Well, that's my flat dinosaur. Little arms. They got little arms. How far across is the river? Like what what length are we looking to try to traverse? Um, well, I mean, he, you know, Pivum, you can look and see that the river itself is probably about 60 feet wide, something along that those lines. Okay. Um, but Pivum's like, well, but you know, I mean, Zola down at the end of the river. So you just follow the river down. You can get to her down in the swamps. Uh -oh. oh, okay. So this is kind of the the moment where we decide which way we're going. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you you got to pick. I'm I'm going that way, going home. Um, but you know, uh, I don't remember a lot, but uh, I feel a lot. I can tell we meant something to each other. And, uh, I mean, you still you still do. It it, it kind of sucks that you don't remember, but that's not your fault. Um, but well, I want to say, I feel I should say thanks a bunch, and uh, that if you ever need me, you know the the bandicoots were just a holler away. Well, I don't know where we'll be, but I'll, I'll say for myself. Same. If you ever need any help, I'm hopefully just a holler away. 
I'm an axe away, Pivum. One <laughs> axe away. Ah. And you know, maybe we'll figure out how to get some indoor plumbing happening for you. Get a shower working. <laughs> oh, oh Nanti, that does sound sounds good. You oh. seem to have flowing water nearby. Hmm. I mean, I'm not much of a structural engineer, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so I guess I'll just ask, is this goodbye for now? For now. Um, if you're going to Zola, I think so. Okay. All right. So we're just going to kind of stroll up on Zola? Is that our plan? I don't know if we've gone that far with a plan, but that sounds as good as any we've come up with right yeah let's bump into her and tell her that we're not trying to kill her necessarily at this time <laughs> yeah we might want to say it with a little more conviction yeah. i mean look if she's got spies all around us wouldn't she be on to that by now oh sure we should just call it out zola <laughs> we're not here to kill you zola i mean it can't it can't hurt I don't know if those spider things can get a communication back to her or if she's got other things, right? So. Just got to, just, um, you know, Pim goes, oh, yeah, the, the chill rock, the stone spider thingies. Yeah, just a beacon. They just let her know if oh. they found what they're looking for, they can <laughs> tell her where it is. Okay, but no, nothing, nothing more specific. That's good to know. Uh, anything else you think a bunch of, Strangers in a strange land to know about Lorelia. What actually, what are those fruit called? Because I want to bring some with us as we walk across. <laughs> um, um, he he calls them um, um, juicy fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So wait, when you bite into them, do, are, do they have like a liquid core that goes, or is this like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very juicy, juicy fruit. <laughs> <laughs> the juicy fruit represented in this stream is not the juicy fruit. <laughs> no copyright infringement. No. We need to sponsor the lower third, third, lower third. juicy fruit were harmed in the making it's, of this DTRPG. It's juicy with two E's. Yeah. Ah. Juicy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um. so, so we should, uh, I don't know. Put some of this juicy fruit on a stick and string and i don't know hold it in front of this flat dinosaur and just ride down the river i mean what's yeah. the plan well I, I i can throw pretty far now so if needed i can just keep throwing if needed to... uh, fruit or people well you saw Ooh, how it attacked right. that other fruit it went flying in the air and then plopped right down i mean i I don't have any harnesses and you know like we're not doom here we're not like writing sand things and i don't have Red any doom <laughs> no we're writing water things <laughs> so we're supposed to walk on the wa water without rhythm you're saying <laughs> i mean all right we well i don't also... I'm gonna grab your chris hooks and yeah <laughs> just walk along the river bank to the other yeah. side stay yeah. out of the water yeah, I think, Pivum, you said that if you got to get across to go home. Yeah. All right. That's okay. I, I got I got a plan. Like I said, I'm going to direct them okay. away and swim oh. as fast P as I can. Pivum, I mean, like, do you want me to just fly you across? Oh, and sure. Yeah, that'd be easy. I can just come back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I would really hate for you to depart our company at this point in time and us watch you waving <laughs> and then you know some giant dinosaur treats you like a juicy fruit. <laughs> yeah that'd be that would be bad okay. i am happy wow. to fly you across uh, okay. before, before you go Pivim, how many of these things are there oh uh, flat dinosaurs or juicy yes. fruit no uh, the, pl the flat dinosaurs oh no, 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 no. Uh, they're all sizes um they're territorial so there'll be one big one in each area of the river, but they'll have lots of little ones around as well. Um, so that's the big guy there for this area. Um, but you want to be careful because they'll defend it. 
And how big is that one compared to the other big ones? Oh, that's, that's a big guy right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about okay. as big as they get. Okay. Neb, are you taking notes? Oh, absolutely. And yeah, Neb has been this whole time just locked <laughs> eyes every time this thing comes into, into view. Yes. Are we seriously considering riding one of these creatures? Well, I'm I, considering I, I'm turning into question. one at some point, but... Ha, has anyone ever even rode, like, you know, a horse? Much what? less some <laughs> giant, you know, stingray that he is, like, calling a dinosaur. And I'm really disappointed. The, land, the <laughs> land thief is a little concerned about <laughs> riding a water dinosaur. Well, I mean, I've ridden horses and I've swam with stingrays. You just kind of put the two together, am I right? Or I agree. No, wrong. I feel like you might be wrong. But... <laughs> Wouldn't it be sort of like a like a the moving tramways in a, an airport? Hey, oh, listen, I, I I am uh, like getting out of this because whatever is decided, like if we're gonna do a wild plan like this, I'm gonna like grab a rope and fly behind. Right, like so. So I am excusing myself from riding strange creatures that we have never ever. Wouldn't that seen. risk turning you into Silas, a pussy for that yourself? Silas doesn't want to ride a dinosaur. I'm not. I, and and Pivot, I don't even know if this is a dinosaur. Honestly, like this doesn't seem like a mini dinosaur I've ever seen. It's a Lorelian dinosaur. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. Well, where else Lorelian have you seen dinosaurs? Just out of curiosity. Jurassic Park, obviously. <laughs> Velociraptor. <laughs> well, Wait. actually, that one was wrong. Like, that's more like a dinosaur. So. I, I suppose Silas makes a good point, though. What, why are we not just walking, uh, like, with a river? Is, so is there if, something? Is it too far around it? It, it sounds like... a lot longer, but you could. You could walk along the side. Um, yeah, I mean, there's dangers there, too. But uh, I gotta get across. But Silas, yeah, Silas is gonna... Are you, are you ready? I'm, good. I'm ready. Before, their goodbyes. Yeah. yeah, Neb is gonna kind of awkwardly come walking in up uh -huh. and say, "So, thank you for everything. I really appreciate every. No, you don't remember any of it, but you, you taught me a lot, and I really appreciate it. And you mind if I give you a hug, even though I know you've only known me for like two days?" Um, he he opens his arms, having seen this, you know, and goes to give you, yeah, like just a little, you know. Like six inches of hug. Um, I'll kneel on down and give him a hug. And then, and then he says, um, "Would you like a, a Larillian goodbye?" Absolutely. He puts his hand down in the mud to get a good stamp of it here, and then um, just like you know, places his hand in your on top of your hand, and the the mud kind of squishes together and <laughs> squirts out. He says, "Fantastic." I will. Hand. I will remember that as long as I'm here in Lorelia. Yeah. Everybody will get that. <laughs> well, She's being I... serious. She's like, yes, absolutely, <laughs> Lorelia, and goodbye. Well, thank you so much. You might not remember, but you have saved our tales quite a few times, and you're very yeah. brave. And well, bye, buddy. Guy, uh, I'm not good at goodbyes, so I'm just gonna nod and wave thank you i hope that we see you again or maybe not he'll some... he'll pick up some of the mud and to each of of you robin and feruza just do like a handprint squelch on your boot <laughs> or your you know your your pants or something mm -hmm. like that a little remembrance of me i've got a lot of good memories I'm not going to say goodbye, but I think yeah, you're owed. At some point, we we need to go back and go skiing, and you're you're owed some sort of penguin slide, yeah, I believe. Yeah. So yes. uh, I'll just oh, say well. until we go skiing and penguin sliding. If we go again, I don't know. We don't have snow here in Lorelia, but uh, we got. Then the we're water due shoots. for another adventure. Yeah, we do the water slides, the water shoots. Then we go like and uh, well, then like till the water arm. shoots. And who knows, maybe once we figure all this out with Zola and everything's fine, we can then come visit and say hi and have some fun without having yeah. to worry about anything. Here I'll say, the only thing to remember was Zola. Um, she loves Lorelia, 
and she will squash anyone that does not respect Aurelia. Mm. But if you are good and kind and respectful, she's uh, she's tough, but but fair. Mm -hmm. It's good to know. All right, are you guys ready All to right. do this? All right, crush. <laughs> yes. You ready? I'm ready. All aboard the Silas Express. And then Silas is going to just kind of gently uh, lift him up telekinetically and like kind of hurl him over his shoulder to like piggyback a little bit. Uh, Silas's muddy hands are going to come press on either side of your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> muddy handprints. He'll reach one out for you, Maeve, for like a high five if you want to. High five. Yeah. Fantastic. You all have some of Lurillian earth, the Lurillian mm. mud on you, uh, mm -hmm. shared between you two. I'm, I'm right. going to uh, fly him across and I'm going to yeah. keep the conversation uh, between us, but yes. um, I'm just kind of talking the whole time. I'm flying pretty slow. Um, mm -hmm. And as I'm doing it, um, if he's on my back, like you can't really see uh, what mm -hmm. I'm doing with, with my hands and I'm, I'm trying to kind of hide something. And uh, when I when I get across, um, I eventually uh, just say, "All right, Crash, it's been really great getting to know you, and then you forgetting all about us, and then kind of remembering us a little bit the last couple of days. Um, definitely, definitely share your passion and zeal for showering. And so I thought I'd give you a little going away present, and then like as I'm setting him down, um, I telekinetically float." Um, a couple of towels that uh, Silas has, a washcloth, like, yeah, yeah, tied off into <laughs> um, into like some uh, like like a heart shape um, that that he is like uh, sending over to Pivum. And, uh, like, and then, like towel art on a cruise ship, like yeah. towel gami hotel yes. towel gami. That, that's it. That's it. And so then, um, and and trust me, Silas knows how. To do it. Um, oh, yeah. So um, so <laughs> Silas says. I don't know really why I'm giving you that because that's going to be completely filthy and probably unusable before too much longer, but I hope you enjoy it while they're clean. He, he takes the heart folded towels out of the air in his muddy hands and sort of pushes his face into it. You hear, <sighs> he looks up at you. And again, you know, he's all fur and hair and his hat's real low, but you can just sort of see his eyes in this moment through the, the dense hair. And they look a little, a little wet, a little moist. You hear a little quaver in his voice. And he says, you know, I can tell we were good friends and I won't soon forget you uh, again. <laughs> and he takes the towel he throws it over his back like your cape. Da 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 da. Crash <laughs> to the rescue. <laughs> and darts off into the underbrush. Silas is gonna. Um, Good man. Silas is going to uh, lift up into the air, like, um, and, and kind of like lay, like almost like he's doing a backstroke uh, with his back and like, <laughs> with his head toward uh, everybody. And um, as he's kind of floating uh, back, uh, he's flying very high to make sure that he does not get uh, picked off by, you know, flat pseudo <laughs> um, But uh, but as he's as he's flying back, um, you um, you don't see anything with his hands, but he is telekinetically wiping away some tears. <laughs> and then, and then uh... before, before, before that, ha uh, before he gets back there, he he kind of corkscrews and then flies back. And uh, tells everyone, uh, yep, yeah, all right, I guess it's time to go. Are we taking the water or the land route? Well, I don't think we take the water. It's faster, isn't it? Faster, but more dangerous. I yeah, either. Yeah, I think they're both dangerous. <laughs> this is the danger we know versus the danger we don't know, right? Maybe. But there's a lot we don't know. So Listen, I guess. The spiders, mosquitoes, like, I, I just don't even. So I would almost rather deal with a pseudo dinosaur than any of those. Um, is it is it possible to like I don't know make some sort of intelligence check to see if this is a good idea? <laughs> Are you asking if we're intelligent, Robin? <laughs> Just like I've never been intelligence checked by. Her. <laughs> um. <laughs> 
Oh I mean, that describes D and D to a nutshell, right? It's yeah, survival this is a good check. idea. This is survival here. Just like a, this is a like a, a general, uh, a general party intelligence survival instinct. Um, let's see. Shade, I never. Um, I think the the <laughs> what has been laid before you is that the river will be faster and that you will only you will have to deal yes with flat dinosaurs uh that are territorial um if you follow the jungle there are other issues you know other other creatures that you have less information about and it will be slower um hmm. let's see what other kind of information am i trying to get you know give you here um but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's up to you. It really is. It's just about how, how do you want to get there? <laughs> All right. Robin is starting to gather you up wanna some Do you want to ride a dinosaur? Do you want to? While Robin is gathering up fruit, yes. uh, Neb is going to kind of eye everywhere and go, well, I, I've got some other suggestions, I think. <laughs> like, I'm all for riding a flat dinosaur. I could also just ask them. Yeah. Mm -hmm they'll let us cross without becoming juicy fruit uh I, hopefully they'll say yes um we could also just try to figure out a different way of getting across like silas can fly uh Feruza, if i turn into something small you could probably chuck me uh yeah. silas yep. might be able to carry someone you know so maybe there's like alternate ways that we can get across well you all are not yes. trying to get across you're trying to get down river Oh, okay. yeah. I thought it we were going. Like either, we're, we're either taking the the super highway boat, oh. boat flat dinosaur express, yes. or we're walking along the the long the edge. road That's it. to get down to the swamps where you okay. were told Sola yeah. is her, her where she. Okay, was like, I so, thought this yeah. was just we're getting across to go down. My bad. No, well, no, Nepos will offer those some, suggestions. You know, I would have made some rounds. <laughs> We were just trying to get across. Um, yeah. The, well, yeah. Um, so if we're doing that, then I could talk to them about being okay with, you know, maybe if yeah. we have a whole bunch of juicy fruit and are they okay with it? And then I can just swim alongside and Silas can fly and maybe that, that'll be enough. Yeah. yeah you can, um, I mean, may, you, maybe you can... ask them, like, if you're going to talk to them, uh, one of the things that I was thinking about with that is, um, you know, it was a fantastic show at first. It was like the best show on TV. Uh, it started really declining in some of, it, of its later seasons. Ooh. But, you know, there was this one episode where uh, they had to, uh, you know, go out amongst walkers and they <laughs> like rubbed guts all over themselves. And it made them very unappetizing to the zombies. And then they were able to just kind of freely walk amongst them. So maybe when you're talking to them, see if you can get like a, a, a visceral response to like their least favorite thing to eat. Where then maybe we can like you know wipe ourselves in that, <laughs> and then if we are, which by the way I'm not riding again. I do want to put that. Out. I'm flying. But, You've made that clear, um, Silas. But if everybody else is riding, then maybe you can wipe yourself in something that is so repulsive to it that it would never want to eat you. Oh, I thought you wanted to wrap us in their guts. And I was like, they're not going to appreciate that at all. Pro probably not. I mean, like the metaphor breaks down at some point, um, you know, or, or the, wait, is, is that a metaphor? Or is that like whatever that other thing is? It's oh, not analogy. a simile because, yeah, you didn't use like. like That's how I usually yeah. tell the yeah. difference. Well, it's an analogous. I, I kind of said. <laughs> it's yeah, an it, analogous statement because it's yeah. easier comparing a thing to another thing. That's it. Using that yes. as a... that thing right there, and so <laughs> and so it breaks down at some point. Yeah. But I'm just saying that, like, maybe if we find out that they really, really hate um, garlic, why they would? I don't know why. They're dinosaurs, not vampires. Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're just going <laughs> here. Just... <laughs> well, um, Robin, do you want some help collecting some juicy fruit? And I can start with the like, hey, we have stuff to offer. Oh, by the way, are there things you don't like so we don't get that? And kind of. Like for instance, if somebody wiped mayonnaise all over themselves, oh. then I would literally have nothing to do with them ever, <laughs> probably ever again. So I mean, I'm that's... just saying maybe the dinosaur has something like that too. Maybe there's something. Do you I speak flat, ask... Neb? Can you speak flat? I don't know. 
Not until I try, but I figured uh, helping Robin get some fruit so that they want to talk to me and not want to try to eat me is probably a good idea for It'll help to lure them out, too. So, you know, we'll put some kind of near the shore and hopefully they come out and you can say, hey. Exactly. All right, let's do it. Wait a minute, Neb, how confident are you right now that you can turn into this dinosaur? Like, can do you, like, roll for something and you turn into the wrong thing and it pisses them off? Or are you confident that you can turn Wait, into it? are you one? turning into it? Or if you, you turn into a it? really big one, then you love. become the territorial purse thing that takes over, right? I mean, maybe? <laughs> I, don't, I thought I was something that big. <laughs> I, I have no, no idea, but I've, I'm... I'm game to try it all. I did think we were just talking to it to ride it, but oh. you're right that like if okay. I I could maybe turn into I don't know. Let's Not until talking. I try. Let's start with talking. Let's start with yeah. fruit and talking, and we'll go from there. All right. Yeah. Here's all the fruit. <laughs> wow. How do we get anything done? How do we get anything done? How, how, do, we, how do we know what the where the fruit is like? And, and Silas is going to fly up, and yes. he is very much so listening as as well as he can for buzzing. Yeah. Yes. Anything yes. Else because he does not want any of that. Um, yeah. Yes. But like, look, looking in trees to see if the fruit's there. Yep. Perception yes. check, please. Okay. That's you really good that. if you're that up in the sky. Zero. Nope. Yeah, zero. Yeah. Zero. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, you can see that there's a fairly an unnatural grove of these fruit trees um, really right nearby. Um, a number of them are overhanging into the water and you can see that like fruit will drop into the water from there, which is potentially how these creatures got their taste for it. Um, so there's quite a lot there you can get. Um, you do not see any spider's nest. You do not hear any buzzing. You get the feeling it is getting very hot, very fast in the daylight. Um, now that the sun is out and you get the feeling that a lot of creatures, if they're not in the cooling waters are resting or, and actually you're starting to feel like this could be a problem for you as well. Mm. Mm. It's hot. So, uh, you know, I, I know that many of you did not grow up in the sweltering humidity of Georgia, but, um, I'm just telling you that, like, it's pretty early in the morning right now, and it is already getting way too hot out here. And so I think this is probably another reason that we might want to consider this water route, where we can have a, a pretty steady flow of, you know, cooling on the, the computer fan here, right? Like, we don't yeah. want to overheat our systems okay. um, as, yeah. as we're heading down here. Um, but, um, you know, fruit all around, like, I can, I can start, like, you know, chunking a lot of this stuff out of the... Uh, the tops of the trees if we can't find any on the ground. Great. I have, I have a ridiculous question. Are there <laughs> any fruit that have naturally fallen onto the ground? Um, yeah. Uh, so th there's a whole bunches of fruit that uh, sometimes they'll lay on the ground for a little too long and they'll ferment. Can I find any that uh, are fermented? Sure. Can... I'm okay with this. This is not yet a ridiculous I know what oh you're God. doing. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, Neb. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help Robin and Silas and everybody collect some fruit, but if I find one or two that have obviously gone uh, a, a little on the, the yeah. side of alcoholic, I'm going to put those aside. Not <laughs> even a little bit. You find like there's, you know, animals come through here and pick and eat. So there, you know, there's a, a, a variety, um, but you find quite a bit that's turned that animals have left. Okay. Have not chosen to eat. Okay. Just. Well, yeah, because, you know, you can only get uh, intoxicated from fruit so many times before you decide that's a bad idea. <laughs> but yeah, she's going to, she'll grab like one or two, just okay. for, Smart. Smart. just Add it to, to your inventory. Yeah. What do they, what does juicy fruit look like? Is it grapey uh, or is it fruit? banana? No, it's, it's more like, um, like a dragon fruit or a, I think where it's like sort of spiky, almost like a pineapple. It has sort of spiky outside that's a little mm -hmm. ouch to touch, um, but inside it does. It just bursts with juice and flesh in the inside um, once you kind of get it open, if you can get around the spines. Oh, good. Juice. Silas brought up a good point. It's early in the morning, time for breakfast, and Fruza will be biting into one of the fruity juicy okay. fruits. <laughs> um, Fruza, mm -hmm. you take a bite of this and just... <gasps> all the way through, you're like, you feel completely um, 
hydrated and fresh, and suddenly the heat doesn't seem to bother you as much. Something about this, like the, the instant hydration that it gives you, you're like, oh, suddenly qu quite a bit more comfortable. All the sweating has been sort of replenished. You guys, and you look up and you see juice on, whatever color juice is yeah. on Fruz's mouth and she sort of wipes it. And you guys notice that Fruz definitely looks way bigger than you ever thought she did. Her skin is paler. She looks a little bit more like, I don't know, wild. That's a good term, wild. Mm. She's noticed. She's like, maybe it's Lorelia, maybe it's just because it's the morning and her hair is a mess, whatever. But she's like, I just bit into the juicy fruit and it's like an, an inner air conditioner slash hallucinogenic, not really, <laughs> but I just feel really good. Oh. I don't know. I'll crack one of the regular ones open and take a bite. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Suddenly as it's like, as Maeve hears you that were... description, she's 100% on board. Yeah. She's like, okay, <laughs> let's go. In her argument. Oh. So again, it's not, not a lot changes or anything with you, but that, you know, but that sort of like, whew, you know, the heat and everything kind of pushing in on you and feeling the sweat and everything. You take this bite, it just sort of cools you down from the inside. Like as if you had taken a big gulp of Gatorade. Oh yeah, just electrolytes. How many of these things can we everything. fit into Miss Robin's bag? I mean, you know, for you know, they're like palm sized. You know, I'd say yeah, again, mm -hmm. like a dragon fruit, that kind of a mango sort of size to them. As not, Robin is small. chewing one, she's like stuffing some into her bag. <laughs> <laughs> Frizza, this is amazing. We we just don't know how long they last, but yeah, that's a great. Fun. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. job, Frizza. We do know how big your backpack is. Though, do lick the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lick the walls, but do lick the fruit. Uh, uh, Robin, do you have any idea how many of those uh, dolls you had in your bag? And we could probably at least do one fruit for every doll that came out, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and there were a lot of dolls. There were. Quite Does this mean at some point we're going to come back and all these spiders are just going to be playing with these dolls? Because they can't eat them, I don't think. That so. is horrific to think about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was actually kind of cute, but maybe you're right. You're going to end up with the, the Toy Story creatures. <laughs> the head on the... Mm -hmm. That's oh, right, I, yes. I always thought that that was um, kind of cute, toys. but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sid, Sid was very misunderstood. <laughs> um, all, all right. Shall all right. we? And like Robin is kind of like holding... A fruit, kind of like a softball. It's just... mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's see if we can talk to a flat dinosaur. All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. Robin is going to chuck it into the water so that mm -hmm. it makes enough noise, enough movement. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be kind of close to the, the edge. Just enough, maybe okay. like 10 feet out. Okay. Maybe 15. So... Um, it floats there, bobbing for a little bit. You see a little ripple of like, like the upper lip of one of these things. This is a smaller one. This is probably about four feet across, but it is, again, it's this it's very flat, you know, wide mouth, uh, that just kind of nibbles at it. Now this one doesn't take it all in one. It does sort of bite down and taking a piece of it. And another smaller one, this one's only about a foot wide comes up to take a bite. Um, and they're just sort of, you know, tearing pieces off of it. Um, you even see another one comes by that's about two inches wide. Oh. A really little sort of tadpole one um, that disappears very quick, just gets a little nibble. And as soon as I see at least one of them, especially the two of them, I will mm -hmm. call out in whatever way that Neb kind of uses to try to talk to animals and go, hi, <laughs> um, can, can we chat for a second? Um, you all, like what the rest of you kind of hear or see as she attempts to do this is a little bit of like a <laughs> kind of her mouth gets pretty long and wide as she can make it. It's all kind of bubbly lippy noises with a little bit of teeth. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they do sort of turn to you. Uh, the little ones scamper away, but the one that's four feet kind of 
ripples its edges and comes up closer. Um, it does have a long tail as it gets into the, the clearer water by the edge. And you can see as it pulls itself up, it has tiny little arms <gasps> at the front and oh, tiny no. little legs at the back that it, it kind of breaststrokes with its little legs. So it is kind of a frog. <laughs> But much wider across the middle, like a frog stingray. Um, it's a mobile lily pad. hybrid. Yeah, a mobile yeah. little lily pad is a really good way to look at that. Um, and it kind of pulls itself up as if it were doing a little, you know, a little cobra pose and pushes itself up on these tiny little legs flat out on this side and goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm actually spitting on my computer. <laughs> I, I did the same thing. Yeah. It was <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which you hear to be, mm, you have yum yum? Yeah, absolutely. I was hoping uh, you would help us out if we gave you a bunch of yum yums. Feed me, feed me. Uh, Miss Robin, can you throw in another another fruit? Yeah, of course. He's, again, the whole thing. <laughs> um, and as it does, you notice that it eats with the, you know the fruit that it eats now that we're kind of up on the land it also because it's so wide it kind of bites anything in that area so it gets oh. some mud it gets some plant it gets some mud, it, and it mm. kind of eats all of it um and and does not seem too discerning um but it is you know the side that has the fruit maybe kind of yeah. is able to redistribute it and you get a good view inside it is not just the front row of teeth there are several rows of teeth that kind of go back in this panel <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, a shark. Roomba. river Roomba <laughs> river Roomba <Pick> everything up <laughs> so we need to get down the river and I was hoping uh maybe you and some of your friends would help us get down the river and we'd provide a lot of yum yums along the way in exchange Mm. Oh, we like yum yums, but uh, Big Daddy, Big Daddy won't be happy about that. I mean, we can offer Big Daddy yum yums too. This is not just for you. This is for anybody who's interested. Mm, big Daddy eats a lot of yum yums. I mean, he's big, so he would. Um, is Big Daddy around somewhere? Oh yeah, Big Daddy's eating. Would you like to come eat some yum yums and maybe uh, give a couple people a ride? Mm, Big Daddy likes uh, uh, yum yums like you. Okay, well, we're looking for a ride, not to be lunch. <laughs> we're, we're looking for an exchange, not to be um, food. Okay. He turns around and starts to kind of go away. I'll look at everybody else. Uh, so they're interested and they're going to go get Big Daddy, which I'm assuming means the territorial big one in this area that we saw earlier. Oh, so there's Mama Spider, there's Daddy Flat Dinosaur, and you're spitting across the river. <laughs> did you notice what you were doing when you were speaking that language, Nev? It was very interesting. I mean... Yeah, what, what did they say, Nev? Basically, they like yum yums. Um, they're interested in helping. Uh, they like to eat anything. There was a moment in where they were talking about how Big Daddy likes to eat stuff like us. And so I had to try to make it clear that we're not, we're not food. I've not yeah. succeeded in that with any of the animals I've talked to yet, but maybe this is the one. <laughs> uh, also, we should probably collect as many of these fruit as possible <laughs> so that we don't run out uh, if this works. Never change, as Ned. <laughs> that optimism. <laughs> As Nev is describing this to you, those of you, know, Nev's sort of talking to you, those of you who have any eyes in the water see this enormous ripple, 15 feet across, just <laughs> these huge flat frog lips with teeth kind of rise up. I didn't expect the, the eyes, they are like a stingray kind of on a, a central lump on either side, but they're bulbous again, like a frog's and kind of like, like a chameleon or iguana could kind of look in different directions, you know, whatever they kind of, they're independent of each other. Um, so this one just kind of like, and flops. It takes up the entire bank. I mean, all of you have to take a step back as it sort of heaves. It's the, the front of its, you know, lips up on there. Um, Hi. And uh, <laughs> immediately throwing like three yum yums. <laughs> um, <laughs> Silas this is immediately flying up and back. Yeah. Yes. 
just to keep an gotcha. eye on Gotcha. Um, wow. It, 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 with very little effort. I mean, it opens its mouth for the three juicy fruit yum yums that you've thrown at it, uh, Robin. And with very little effort, it just kind of opens and it, the three of them roll in as <laughs> well as several other things around the area. Again, it just chomps down on anything that kind of gravity throws <laughs> into its mouth. Um, <laughs> and as Nip, as you say hi in this, this animal language um it uh it it's it's two its eyes are sort of catching you and the other creatures at the same time Ew, big yum yum no no we're not big <laughs> yum yums but we're friends and would like to get you lots of yum yums if you'll help it takes another, like, pulls itself up another few feet onto the bank. It's like eating, it opens its mouth, it eats all of the, the vegetation at the edge as it takes that, like, flop closer. Um, and it goes, mm, help for big yum-yums. Yeah, so we need to get down the river, and you are impressively large. And a couple of my friends can't swim. Would, would you be willing to maybe carry a few people down the river if we provide all the yum yums? Persuasion check, please. Okay. While you're ready, convince him that we taste disgusting. <laughs> I haven't gotten there for a... It's only, it's only an 11. Mm -hmm. Only an eleven. The spit um, is a little, a little much. Oh yeah, your your dialect is way off. You sound yeah. like, uh, you know, um, uh, you're insulting his uh, his oh. mother. His, oh jeez. Yeah. So uh, again, another flop as it pulls itself further out of the water onto the bank. You can see that, like this bank, what what scared Pippin in the beginning is that this is clearly what he has carved out from pulling himself up. This muddy bank is what he's come up to eat whenever he's come in, and he's he's not super slow. It's an effort to do it, but he can really kind of take a big leap forward. In fact, uh, those of you as you're stepping back might get a little of his spittle on your shoes as you kind of step out of his range, but he's pulling himself up closer to you um, and attempting, you know, to kind of get within within range of you. Hey, hey, hey y'all. Um, and again, Silas flying up and back. Uh -huh. He said I was, but hey, uh, y'all, uh, I just happened to think about this too. Like, I think our plan is like, inherently flawed because uh crash told us that these things are very territorial which means that they have territories so if we're wanting to get all the way down the river even if we ride big daddy or whatever his name is here uh, we're gonna get to a point where there's like gonna be a big papa or something um and big daddy and big papa are gonna want to fight because they're very territorial so i genuinely think that we need to back away from this situation and you know no mm. harm no foul kind of thing uh, maybe it would be just like a subway transfer, you know? Just and then we gotta go subways. through this again of convincing <laughs> them not to eat us. Oh, uh, Miss Robin, can you throw a few a few more? I think my accent's off, and I might have not said what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, but I, Silas, if 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 you want, I can I can disengage from this encounter. I mean, I think he's trying to engage with eating somebody right now, is what it looks like to me, because he keeps creeping up on us. He creeps up another one, and at this time you hear a squeal as some small creature, um, uh, sort of a muskratty kind of mousy type creature, gets caught in just this enormous bite range that he grabs. And uh, as this one, it, it very quickly, you know, is over um, as it gets uh, crushed by all of these teeth. But when that happens and the blood of this creature sort of oozes out, um, the lips on this creature sort of flutter. And Neb, you can hear, you know, what is unmistakably a mmm. A <laughs> uh, To everybody else, I'll say, all right, so it, it sounds like they'll eat the fruit, but they're actually real interested in maybe something more <laughs> bloody juicy. Um, let me, oh let boy. me, let me try one more thing and I'll turn back to Big Daddy okay. and say, um, or 
if you don't want to help carrying anybody, can you at least let us know if there's anything we should be worried about going down river and we'll we'll pay in lots of fruit and i'll i'll like hold out a hand for to robin like uh -huh. <laughs> give me give me a persuasion check you know oh what this God. one i'd love for you to roll you got it What's i got a plus bonus? five. Oh, i rolled good okay um <laughs> Um, I'll just uh, ask for a fruit from, from Robin and roll it into his mouth as I'm asking. His eyes go kind of cross-eyed as he gets the blood mixed with the juicy fruit. It's like a, you know, quite a, a, a sophisticated mm. palate. He's got the mm. greens from the mm. algae and the moss um, as he kind of all combines together. And he's, you know, kind of begins to sink back into the water like he's well satisfied and sort of says um the last little bubbles of uh, uh come out with like um um just be careful he goes watch out for the falls oh that's yeah now okay thank you that's really good information uh and i'll turn to everybody else once I'm pretty sure that I'm far enough away from this creature that it couldn't just leapfrog uh -huh. onto me uh, and say, okay, so uh, another reason why we might not want to be riding these creatures, apparently there's some um, falls that we got to watch out for. And that won't oh. be fun. To, I've never gone like whitewater rafting and everything, but something tells me that's a bad idea. All right, time to check it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that you rode a barrel over Niagara Falls or something before. I was waiting for it. <laughs> no, that never that never appealed to me, and it still kind of doesn't. Or riding over the falls on a flat dinosaur. So. Oh. Well, you Sorry. think about it. The yum-yums, the, well, actually, whatever you say that they, they call them, they really don't have access to them unless something gives them to them, like a bird drops it in the water. They really can't get at them. So they're really valuable, I'm assuming, the yum-yums. A kind really of, no? but then no? it had a snack of the, at that, whatever that poor muskrat thing was, and it seemed much more interested in that as a main course than the appetizers of the yum yums. All right, so we're not doing this because <laughs> chuck some in the water far away and try to get it. I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board for yeah. riding a dinosaur. I didn't prepare yeah. mechanics for it, but I'm on. Board. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not really. I'm not confident that I could toss you far enough across the river. I might just throw you to the flat dinosaurs. So. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so yet. Robin, you're 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 luring it further out by t chucking uh, juicy fruit. After looking yeah. at the group, I'll make okay. sure this is. Yeah. Okay. Chucking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, at this point, the only other thing that I can think of that would be similar to this is I could try to turn into one, but then I think Silas, you make a, a, a you and Robin make good points about what are we going to do when we come across the territorial ones. I don't know how to fight as a flat dinosaur. Oh, you'd be a pretty blue one, though, I think. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, do we want to try right. to get across the river some other way, or are we just... I, guess so. like, I think we'll just, what, stay on... Do, what, Dry do land? We stay on this side and walk, or do we need to get across? You can follow this, you can okay. follow this, this bank. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it sounded like it was just going to take a little longer to do that. Yeah. And, yeah. By the power of montage. <laughs> <laughs> I tell me Robin actually says that. <laughs> you really now want a deity in the pantheon named Montage. Yes. <laughs> allows you to fast forward. Montage. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yes, you all begin, I guess, Silas flying alongside, um, begin to hike uh, following the river down. Um, it's dense, it's very hot. Uh, you do find that the fruit that you gather, the juicy fruit, you get about a, an hour or so out of it before you feel like I need another, another bite. Um, hmm. so it's just one bite that sort of works for that amount of time, but it will, it will keep you from having to, uh, roll some saving throws, uh, if you keep enough on you and take some, some good bites out of it. 
Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so you have them, you keep, you know, you can, we'll just say you have them on you and you can eat them uh, as needed. Um, they're fairly abundant, so you can replenish when you need to. Uh, so yes, so as you're walking, you walk for about an hour, it is hot, you're eating your juicy fruit. You finally come to a place where it's not the swamp yet. You can tell the water is still rushing, but ahead of you is sort of a mangrove, um, pools where the mm. water has seeped up onto the bank um, and the trees, the branch are sort of growing out over on top. Um, unless you want to go inland and lose sight of the river, you will have to climb up over these mangrove trees. I'm all uh, for climbing. Okay. They are trees, aren't they? They're not creatures that look like trees. Or... Mm. Mm. We're I in Lorelia. We are in Lorelia. <laughs> Maeve pokes one. It <laughs> holds firm. It it does not, you know, turn around and bite you. Um, you notice there's a number of vines and things like that, sort of again in the canopy above. I and love a good vine. Mm. <laughs> All right, I, uh, Maeve, you look particularly excited about this. Do you want to lead the way? I mean, sure. Um, I mean, I mean, if people want me to provide support, like, I mean, I, I can carry probably some of you if I make several trips, or I can fly just near you. If, if something happens, I can try to uh, try to catch you. I think that sounds good. Just being on alert for whoopsies. Yeah. <laughs> you look a bird's eye view up there, kind of, sort of, not really, but kind well, of. Well, I mean, birds can't see through this canopy either, but. Um, but yeah, like I, I can at least, I, I will just shadow all of you as you're trying okay. this and okay. close enough to try to avert any disaster. So Maeve, is it, are you going to try to go first and lead the way? Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, fantastic. Uh, I've done how much you to swing, in, swing in from vines. Um, you swing from the vines? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, give Yay. me an acrobatics check. Sure. I'm surprised you're not going to jump on this, Silas. Your opportunity to be Tarzan, you know? <laughs> <I don't> know. <laughs> Who needs to swing when you can fly? 19. <laughs> a 19. So Maeve finds, uh, you know, a, what look, feels like a good sturdy vine from the top and kind of wrenches it off of the, uh, the, the large trunk next to her, uh, wraps her hands around it, gets a little high ground, and jumps and quite literally like Tarzan sort of swings and using your feet, you can kind of push off these different areas of the mangrove below um, to kind of come and land on another branch a little further along. And you can throw that vine back towards your friends if you want to kind of yeah. swing past that way. Yes, please. Okay, fantastic. So those of you who- Neb on the bank is just like, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm not, and then I'll look over at Farooza and real quietly say, I am not going to be able to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Maeve is about halfway across. Um, there's enough room on this branch for all of you to kind of make it. Um, Can, may I note and that I, of there's you... a certain way that I wrapped my arm, almost yes. as a continuation of my tattoo, that right. allows for mm -hmm. a stronger grip. Um, Amazing. Yes. And those of you who watched Maeve and took notes of her technique, I will allow you to do this I with did. advantage. If I, <laughs> if I can sort of help maybe with, with sleight yes. of hand or something similar. Well, let's see. What is, way your, that I did that. what is your dexterity? Or yeah, what is your dexterity um, bone, your modifier? Plus three. Plus three. All right, let's give that. Every, you can all have a plus three if you oh. watched. So do your acrobatics checks with a plus three from learning from Maeve. Okay. Oh. So we all have to do it, or can like you I mean, each you have to out. do this individually, <laughs> unless you want to choose to do it another way. You don't have to follow Maeve's example. If you think you're just that's too much for you, you can try to climb, you can try to swim, you can try to anything. I mean, Neb's gonna at least try it once, okay. and then okay. if things so go Neb, wrong, are you going next? Um, actually, I think I'll wait for a couple more okay. people just so that I can kind of watch a bit more. Robin will go. Yeah, Robin I'm will very go. well right, aware right. I'm not the most dexterous of the group. All right. Acrobatics check plus Maeve's three. Yeah, Robin. 22. 
A 22. Ooh. You learn well, Robin. Um, nice. I imagine you did some circusing in your days. That's oh, yeah. Or another. Yeah. So Took a couple of aerial silks classes. Yeah. yeah. Not the first time you've oh. seen that particular grip. Um, and you too swing side to side, pushing off of other trees, kind of helping you guide yourself and land next to Maeve. <laughs> hands on hips and then sort of swing that uh, vine back towards uh, Neb and Feruza. Uh, Feruza uses thaumaturgy and yells at Miss Robin, show off! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Feruza, do you want to go next? Or do you want me to go next? Yeah, I'll go. Right. Feruza like consults her notes that she wrote on Maeve's technique. <laughs> Acrobatics check plus three. Okay, awesome. What? 18, no, 19, 19. Hey. Yeah, so you two, you grab it. Now, you know, you are uh, bigger than the other ones here. So your crossing is a little bit different. You have yeah. enough momentum to pretty ah. much like get you, you go past a little bit this, the large branch that everyone's on and kind of come back to land on it. Um, <laughs> you know, and the whole branch shakes a little bit as it as it sort of takes your, your newfound density with it um this is interesting <laughs> and swing it back neb as it swings back to you with quite some force as feruza gets used to this new strength and power that she has and neb it is your turn uh and you said advantage and plus acrobatics three. not advantage this is acrobatics yeah, acrobat plus okay um so yeah, she'll grab the vine and it, it's funny with Feruza throwing it, it's like the biggest person to the tiniest person. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. And you know what? That's pretty darn good for me. Uh, that's, that's a 16, so 19. Yeah. So it comes like it does, it actually pushes you back a little bit with your balance, but you're able to hold on and pull it, push it forward. And again, following exactly where Maeve <laughs> put her feet and where Robin put her feet and the momentum that you saw Feruza have, you're able to just boom, 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 light as a feather and land like Peter Pan uh, on the branch next to the rest of your party. That was uh, so much fun. <laughs> well done, Silas. Gang. Silas, watching all of this, uh, you know, what, what is your reaction? I, I'm just uh, basically like, Ah, uh, yeah, uh, ah! Uh, I'm like doing that the entire time, and um, and just just fl flying alongside, and then um, I am floating in front of them now, and I assume there's more. So there's you got about go halfway. There. Yes, they got about halfway. There's another again, sort of thirty feet to traverse now of mangrove trees and water to get to solid. Uh, uh, ground on the other side. Um, mm -hmm. Here, there are less vines. The canopy is a little bit more open here, um, so you're not seeing a way to swing. How would you like to proceed, Nate? Um, si hmm. Silas is going to, j just real quick, Silas is going yeah. to uh, take whatever that vine was that everybody's been mm -hmm. swinging from, because it's proven to be um, strong enough to carry everyone's weight, and I am mm -hmm. uh, up as high as I can get um, basically trying to cut it. Um, okay, I'm, sure. I'm you can spend cut, your cut turn getting, getting, you know, uh, collecting that vine. Sure. Mm -hmm. um. And then si Silas during the turn is just saying, hey, hold on, hold on a second. We might be able to make like a zip line. Here. <laughs> okay. To make this easier. Okay. So if you all want to wait for him, um, as you kind of find your balance and settle on this, this branch, um, do me a perception check, Maeve, as you're looking around, kind of figuring out what this space is. Uh, 18. 18. Um, you just start to notice that some of the logs and things floating in the water below these trees all around, uh, Every once in a while, an eye on top of it opens and then shuts. They're very, very still. Um, and they have, similar to the the chill rock, the, the rock spiders, um, they very much look like logs. Um, and if you hadn't really been searching here to try to figure out a good way to get across, it would have been quite clear. Mm. And or I had turned to everyone and I sort of make the universal crocodile Batman sign. <laughs> uh oh 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just straight up pitfall um, at this point. And oh. if we fall, yeah, we had... you're going to be it. Yeah, we had Frogger yes, earlier, and now it is pitfall. <laughs> yes, as oh. you all start to look down and see, I mean, it, they're everywhere. So, so who is good at tying knots? I mean, I can I can do pretty well with it, but you know, Miss Robin, did you you know take something in the brownies or Girl Scouts? I, I take it back to my caving days. Yeah, I made tons of knots. Oh yeah, and if that counts as sleight of hand, no, I no, knot so. tying is going to be survival. Um, okay. So uh, oh. Silas has done uh, creating this one, you know, getting this vine. Uh, so you're going to bring one end to Robin? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get to a point where, uh, you know, we can attach it securely somewhere uh, mm -hmm. above us. Mm -hmm. And then I am going to fly the other end across and attach it securely. Side. Okay. So you find a branch on this one big tree in the center of this mangrove. Um that that you that is pretty solid and sturdy it's right above so robin if you can climb up there you can tie it or silas you can attempt i i think uh if robin can climb up there with you know yeah, somewhat give ease. me an athletics check please okay i'm, I'm gonna fly alongside her yeah. the back. Mm -hmm. uh it's a 15. A 15. You climb up, you hoist yourself one arm, the other arm, you find just the right footholds and kind of swing your leg over. And gosh, are you like happy for that juicy fruit? Because this is, whew, mm -hmm. it's hot, hard work <laughs> in this area. You know, you all are starting to look like Lara Croft um, as your, you know, different various uh, uh, pieces of clothing get kind of ripped and jagged and, and uh, covered in mud and sweat. It's all very very sexy. Um, <laughs> so sexy granny here jumps up on the top and like swing this vine darn around. Right. Yeah, I'm here for it. Yes. Here. Oh yeah. Shut, you got you know, grab something in your teeth and one end of it in your teeth. Tighten it down. Give me a survival check, please, for your knot. That's kind of a bad Let's go. <laughs> That is a 21. Nice. Um, she looks like a freaking pro as she's just tearing it down. And she just, you know, the rabbit goes into the hole and out of the hole. <laughs> you know, it's all good. And at which point I'm going to just poetically here, she grabs the one end and just sort of swings down to land on the branch beneath. <laughs> Um, are you Robin? What are you? <laughs> awesome. I'm yeah. a granny. She's awesome for hire. As she is. <laughs> I mean, between between Maeve and Robin, you are a circus troupe and it's you're ready for Cirque du Soleil. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, Silas, you're gonna take it to the other end? Yeah, I'm gonna fly uh, to the other end. Okay. Then, um I am going to uh, I am going to let's see. What I'm looking for on the other end is mm -hmm. um, something that is, uh, you know, just slightly lower than where mm -hmm. it was tied off at the uh, beginning, but then also uh, something that uh, it, is, is it something that I can drape across the actual land? Um, um the land starts on the other side. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll reach. This was, you know, these, the vine was, you went way up high and got it. It's long enough. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can attach it to another tree on that, you know, well on the land on the other side. Okay. okay. Um, I am going to check. Um, yeah. Okay. I am going to uh, try to tie that off on that other side. Okay. And then um, mm -hmm. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that first. And Survival for your think... not. If I, if Robin may, it, mm -hmm. I don't know how far it is, but she'll be like kind of instructing on what the best knot okay. and to pull okay. at this point. You can add your wisdom bonus. Okay, that's a plus two. All right, plus two. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, it's an eighteen. Okay, it's an eighteen with with Robin just kind of reminding you a couple of tips and tricks. Uh, you tie a, a pretty good secure knot, and I'll even offer you know if you want to you think you can kind of hold on to the end and brace it as well with some leverage um, in case well, it, it's... Well, I, I, yeah. actually what I'm uh, yeah. planning to do there is I'm going to do that telekinetically with... Gotcha. Fantastic. Force, and, then I am, and then I want to fly along the middle as people are trying to traverse and, and try to, you know, essentially ready an 
action to try to catch someone. Gotcha. So you set that up, you get the leverage set up with your, your psychicness and then fly back over and kind of give them the thumbs up. Who wants All right, to everybody's zip? seen these movies, right? <laughs> like where, where you slide across this kind of stuff. I've uh, seen better. I watched you and Maeve do this in the cave a couple days right. ago. Yeah, I so. forgot we had that. Like that was so long ago. It was it was a little while ago. It feels like forever, but it was only like a week ago. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I what think. What are what are we using to get uh, to hold ourselves? Should we get vines or? Uh, I'll take my sash. Okay. Okay. Uh, my lace, wrap it, and. Takes off, yeah. Takes them, wrap it around your your hands, loop it over the top, and uh, yeah, let's do. I think it's acrobatics. You're still doing like a like a circusy thing here. <laughs> uh, twenty one. Yeah. Sorry, twenty. Dirty twenty. Push yourself back, leap off, and just let gravity. And you know, you've got your legs together forward, you know, perfectly kind of held as it's this, this glide down uh, to land gently on the surface. Mm. And Neb, every single time anyone does one of these traversals, like, yeah. <laughs> Maeve bows as she wraps her sash back around. All right, same order as last time. Um, Robin? Yeah, Robin really doesn't have anything she can use. Uh, so climb hand over hand if you want. Yeah, and wearing a belt. Uh, no, got overalls on. So uh, I, I, I mean, think <laughs> Miss Robin, if you want to tight rope it, like I can, you know, I'm, I'm, hap I'm happy to grab your arms to the sides or whatever behind you. I, I, it's been a while since I did some tire <laughs> roping. Um, I think Robin is just going to look for another sturdy uh, vine. She can just have like a little bit and use mm. that as like, you know, because that, that'll probably slide better than anything she has. Okay, okay. sure. Um, yeah, you can find something that's, you know, there are shorter pieces, you know, smaller bits that are kind of going the other way um, that you can cut off a small section of yeah. um, and use that. All right. Acrobatics. Okay. Plus zero. Uh, it's a 12. It's a 12. You loop this vine over and begin to slide. About halfway through, you can feel the vine that you chose is just a little bit slippery, and you can't oh. quite keep the balance, which is putting some weight towards the other side. So give me a really quick strength saving throw. Oh, great. That's a minus one. Let's see. Oh, no. Please do okay. well. Okay, it's a seven. Uh, minus one is a 16. A 16. You're able to hold on and just kind of through brute gut force reorient yourself. All of you are watching as she like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like a bobsled that can't, you know, get on its course as it's trying to re the thing. You find, you come into the end, but it's just, whoo, as you just sort of land <gasps> on your tuchus on the, on the, <laughs> on the other side, having just kind of made it across here. Oh, Maeve, you made that Ooh. look easy. <laughs> maybe it was just a more slippery fabric i don't know <laughs> but yeah you got here and that's what Ooh. counts that's all that matters all well right. done well, for we'll for... yeah for is that same also <laughs> you're <laughs> hot <laughs> and what just happened <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is quite humid out here <laughs> <laughs> do i have to all right <laughs> I mean, if you've got another idea, I'm willing to listen to it, but I think this is probably our best bet. <gasps> Swinging from tree to tree. This is what we this is what we're doing here. Okay. I mean, you did uh, great the first time. That's true. I did do great the first time. Yeah. All right. You got this. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm wonder... here to assist. Like like I said, if you, if you want to <laughs> try to walk it, I can like fly and hold your hand next to it and you know, give you something to that's true. You have flown me across something before. I have. You're not that heavy, even where you are now. I mean, I can carry you for a little while. But I mean, this wouldn't be carrying. The vine's going to hopefully support your weight. And then I would just, you know, daintily be holding your hand. And, you know, it's almost like we're doing a waltz across it. Frizz sort of considers this option for a minute. And then she smiles and, you know, it's Silas. I think I would love this dance. 
Oh. So, Beruza, <laughs> quick athletics check to jump up to the top level so that you can stand on top of the rope. So, athletics check, please. It's a plus seven. Yeah! <laughs> Show off! I said that because the universe takes me. <laughs> Show off. Do oh, it. no. 19 plus seven. Ah, oh, yes! So if, if, if Robin did like a, like a sexy swinging kind of thing, you are just like, like pull up Sorry. as if it's nothing, right? <laughs> Swing a leg over and stand up. And it's just like wrist riffling muscle as you walk over and the branch shakes a little bit. Again, you're just coiled. You place one foot on the vine. It seems to hold your weight. They tied very good knots. These are strong vines. Um, as you take May a couple steps distance. over. <laughs> Silas floats up, hands out his hand. Takes a hand. You put your other hand out in this sort of perfect balletic, perfect balance and begin to tight rope down. Okay. This rope, it is at a an angle. <laughs> at an angle, Please okay. <laughs> an acrobatics check as you tight oh, rope across. Acrobatics, okay. I'm only a plus one with it. But uh, but we'll add um, we'll do this at advantage because Silas is, oh. is holding on to you. Oh no, twenty one! My nice. dice, her dice is killing me in the good way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you all watch as like. You know, as 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 much as Fruz is like brute strength, there's a grace and a light centeredness, on light on her feet, one foot in front of the other, confident, very focused. As Silas just gives you that little bit of just, you know, it's just like this little bit of support and that other yeah. arm as you gracefully step all the way down across. Um, uh, you know, if a, if a little bit of, of um, leaves or a little bit of the branch sort of falls off into the, there's a little <laughs> as the crocodiles snap at anything that drops, but it doesn't even phase you as you jump lightly off onto the ground on the other side. Thank you. Neb. Thank you. You're alone on a tree <sighs> in the middle of a mangrove <laughs> surrounded by crocs of some alien form mm -hmm. she's been what do you want to do? she's had her sweatshirt tied around her waist kind of taking yeah. inspiration from may so she's untied that and is watching as feruza does this graceful ballet maneuver and there's a moment in where neb is just like you know if i turned into a rat this would probably be a lot easier i could just <laughs> like run across this but then when I fall, I'm going to be a rat when I go for the crocodiles. Okay, let's do this. And she's going to use the sweatshirt. And <laughs> she's going to just try to do this like everybody else has. Acrobatics check, please. Okay. Here we go. You all are very good teachers. That's a 17. Yeah! Ooh, look at that! I've Push never rolled up. this well. <laughs> <laughs> Sliding down again, not quite with the style of Maeve or you know, that kind of thing, but you it's just a very, very Wee! matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> it just kind of very, very, you know, straight on letting mm. the, the, the gravity take you until you kind of land and look around a little surprised. All of you have made it to the other side, you look back. Um, you know, whatever juicy fruit that fell out of your pockets on the way has been consumed by the croc log creatures in the water, and you are free to continue. Maeve, you're an amazing teacher. Yes, good job. And Maeve sort of ducks away from the compliment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so the path over there, yeah? <laughs> Looks good to me. <laughs> you all continue to follow the bank fairly close to the water, but not too close. You know, picking your way through. You're getting better at recognizing the kind of dangers in this area. Um, you know, keeping a little bit ahead of yourselves, throwing rocks, throwing sticks to kind of check things. Finally, you come to a uh, sort of a, not a cliff, but a, a downgrade. And you can see that this is where the water is rushing over a falls. Um, it starts going quite quickly, quite rapidly, uh, uh, you know, within the last, you know, few hundred feet here. And it pours over the edge. This, this waterfall is about 60 feet high. And as you look over the edge, um, you can see that it spreads out into a large open area. There are no um, 
trees here. There's um, just these kind of marshy, swampy Cossacks um, um, that have sort of filled the entire area. You do not see any living creatures or anything from this vantage point, um, but there indeed is the swamp. At the far end, it sort of separates into a lot of smaller little rivers and creeks that disappear back into the jungle. Since we've oh. got a fairly good vantage point up here, can I look around to see, is there signs of any kind of civilization of, you know, like Ivy had a castle, maybe Zola's got a castle, something sure. that we can orient towards. Smart Let's castle. do a perception check to start. Uh, well, I would be Don't appreciative if you'd roll it, please. Plus seven. Plus seven. <clears throat> Nothing here looks um, created by intelligent hand. Everything here looks absolutely natural. Um, the contoured by by nature and life around it. Um, nothing at all that feels like a castle. I think... It, oh, sorry. The only other thing I was going to ask is we were told by Pivim that Zola is big as a mountain. Mm -hmm. Do we see, like, a hill, a mountain, a giant natural formation that might stand out? Everything sort of in the vista ahead of you seems to continue to go down. Uh, you are on a hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Neb's looking out and then has that realization and then just stands really still for a moment. S Silas is going to fly off the cliff. Yes. And like just kind of pan out like mm -hmm. horns, like and um he's he's seriously like just looking for a face or something. A face? <laughs> Perception check. Would you like me to roll it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no. It's mm. it's so, um, I, I mean, you might as well be in like what you imagine is the Amazon or just just untouched wilderness. I don't see anywhere in specific to go. Anybody else see or have an idea? I mean, we probably haven't done this in a while. Zola, Zola, are you there? Um. Nothing responds. Your We're voice sort of hits it. You hear, you hear maybe some like um, <laughs> kind of from far off in the jungle, uh, just some you know noises of creatures living within. Y'all hear the monkeys laughing at me? <laughs> Do you recognize any of those languages, Neb? Uh, I wasn't prepared to listen. I was a, a little distracted, thinking that we might be standing on Zola. Sorry. I didn't think of that. But now I have. Thank you very much. Is oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um if this water, is it rushing? Like up here at the top, it's rushing quite quickly to fall over the falls. There's a pool right at the bottom, um, you know, about this 60 feet down, um, where it kind of collects, but then it seeps out into this marshland. <clears throat> But it seems to calm down after the after yes, the falls. Yes, after the falls, after that sort of pool at the bottom. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to float down to, I, I, hey, I'll be right back. I just want to check something real quick. And um, I'm going to float to the bottom. And when I get to with, well, you said it's 60 feet down. Yeah. I, I'm going to float down about 30 feet. And then mm -hmm. um, with the other 30 feet, I'm going to telekinetically push on the ground in the area around the water to see if there is any land to walk on or if it's gotcha. just going to be a uh, you know, spongy mess. So... And I'll cover some area if I need to. Yes, yes, I'm, yes. Yeah. So using that sort of testing the different, you know, areas, you find this is, it's going to be the kind of... Um, there are places that are solid that you can stand on, and there are places that are, you know, peat mud that's going to suck you right under. Um, and you'll have to kind of keep testing as you walk and as you move to make sure that some of this is solid ground. It's it's going to be, it's a bit of a maze. Very difficult terrain. Very difficult Ooh. terrain, yes. Hmm. Does it look like the water that's coming mm -hmm. from the river... Um, you know, if, um, if if I'm a little closer like that, does it look like it can, the river continues to uh, flow ahead, or does it look like the river splinters so much that it's really not a river anymore? Yes, it splinters so much that this 
this main river sort of spreads out into this swampy land and any water that escapes from this this area is just these small little creeks. As Silas has flown down, when you stop to start looking around, Neb is going to call down and be like, is there anything behind the waterfall? You're always supposed to check behind waterfalls, right? I mean, do you want me to do that by myself? Wasn't that just a Disneyland, like, pressure? joke? <laughs> yeah. Outside of the waterfall. It might be, and uh, yeah, Silas, why don't you wait until we can all go down there and look behind the waterfall? I'm curious. Well, I don't know if we want to go down here. Like, are we convinced this is where we're, we're and he's like starting to float up this time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he just says like, this is, uh, this is going to be pretty treacherous down here. Like, it's mm -hmm. going to be really hard to get around. It. Right. Just but Hivam said swamp. That's where she resides. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, what, what all have we been told about where Zola lives? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, swamp. what yeah, that she her she resides. She, she moves all throughout Lorelia, but her sort of favorite places she has her own her swamp, which is sort of where she spends most of her time. Okay, and that she's as big as a mountain, and a mountain. yeah, oh. and is is part of the land. So. Part of the land, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that tracks. I mean, you've seen crocodiles that look exactly like logs. You've seen um you know the the stone spiders that when they choose not to move look just like a cluster of rocks so it, you know the kind of camouflage in nature exactly. seems to be a common theme everything is natural yeah yeah how late in the day is it um you you guys have been hiking a lot today so you're you're well into the afternoon you need those juicy fruit um they have been keeping you going hmm Well, I mean, like, you know, if we come down, so, so first of all, we can all get down very, very quickly. Um, if, if we want to, uh, like we did, uh, on the, you know, uh, <laughs> mountain of bird nests that we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, and you all so have had we, so many adventures. <laughs> yeah. And we've done so well. I mean, so far, so many things. We're, we're still alive. So yeah. Um, so we can get down quickly, but like, the fear is, is if we hit night, all those, uh, you know, bugs come out again, uh, you know, are we going to have a place that we can, uh, you know, find the luxurious uh, sandcastle abode? Um, or, you know, like, if we get caught down here, it might be a bad place to be. Hmm. Well, at the if very we least... That protection. Yeah, at the very least, we should probably instead of just wandering around in the swamp, at least just decide on a direction, right? Like, it, I don't see anything we should be going after, but, you know, maybe maybe we skirt around it. Maybe we just go right in the middle and keep shouting for Zola. I'm not sure. Is there a way to climb down? Yeah, I mean, there's just, you know, it's like I said, it's not a cliff. Um, you can climb down sort of the rolling hill here. It's steep, but you can climb down next to the waterfall. You could climb down the actual cliff of the waterfall um but you don't have to all right here's a wild thought but <laughs> robin's <laughs> full of wild thoughts today i love it what if hear me out we tried to get zola to come to us and i i, I hate to say it but pivum did say she doesn't like you harming her land but you know harm the land you might so come you're saying like po poke the mountain <laughs> i mean this is this is work smarter not harder i don't know <laughs> it might get what, her work, here work, it doesn't evil. start us in a great place to have a conversation uh, <laughs> that's why i said it was a wild idea but i like I mean, it could work i like the first half of that which is to get her to come to us because i feel like us finding her could be really hard but she could probably find us if she really wanted to or thought about it because I it's think not she like... could have done that at any point in time. Well, but... is there a way to attract her sentinels? Oh. oh. I'm going to look around mm -hmm. on this cliff. We're still like amongst trees and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maeve, do you want to try to attract the sentinel or do you want to just try to attract her or both? 
I, I mean, if the Sentinels tell her where we, where, where we are. I mean, I was that. just out in this opening, like yelling at the top of my lungs. Yeah. Like, like how, how do we think we're going to attract her? Well, well and I'm going to reach out. It's hard for stones to be out in the open air. They tend to sink. Yeah, like yeah that's stone. true. Um, but let me try something. I'm going to reach out and touch the nearest tree. And mm -hmm. this, the same way that I did back in the veil, I'm going to just use that sense of being able to talk to creatures. Uh, I'm okay. going to try to speak with the plants around me. What would you like to say? There's, I'm going to just pat the tree. And the first thing I'm going to say is uh, you're very, you're very epic. Uh, you've got an amazing vista here. Um, we're kind of trying to find Queen Zola. Do you happen to know where she is? Maybe we can smoke her out. Yeah. The ground shakes, rumbles. <laughs> As from down in the Cossacks, a huge hump begins to rise, dripping with mud covered in the moss and the Cossacks around her. Trees uh, rise up as if they are just hair or a, a cape down her back as she rises up and above you, standing 120 feet tall as she looks down on you, standing at the hill and the, and the water which pools down around her massive feet. You woke me up. Uh, sorry for waking you. I didn't know you were asleep. I, I didn't even know you were here. Um, <sighs> you found me. And she begins to open her arms. And as she rises these arms above her head, the mud begins to drip down on either side, trees and things falling, a couple of them turning into these little spider sentinels that just drop off of her as if they were all living on her back. Um, she says, you will not kill me before I kill you. What, 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 she's speaking tree. Yeah, she's speaking yeah, that, tree. Um, okay, oh, so what mind. you... Yeah, so so this happens, and then immediately you see Nem like, well, no, 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 we're not here to kill you. That's actually why we came to talk to you, because this there's been a misunderstanding somewhere. We've just come to talk. Quick, quick, quick persuasion check. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, all right, that's a 22. A 22. She stops mid. She catches all the rest of you, little flies in her presence, little ants. Mm -hmm. She switches from talking plant. And very slowly, she's not very good at English, um, at common, but you can see she has a few words, something that she has learned. Um, and she says, Snow Queen. Tree. Bad. So you Why free? Why bad? Good question. She goes back into plant to speak with you, Neb, thinking it might be. And I'll just automatically, whatever she's saying, yes. translate for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get the distinct feeling that she's on edge in her voice um, or in your, in your planty connection. Um, Plants get stressed, dude. I'm just feeling that stress through the, yeah. the roots of this tree. And, oh. and she says to you, um, you are working with Snow Queen. And once again, I'll just be translating back and forth for everybody, mm -hmm. but Neb will respond and say, well, she was trapped and so were we, and we didn't know much about each other, but we were helping each other. And at this point, the only thing that she helped us with was knowing who had attacked us because you sent those sentinels after us. So we're just here to make sure that there's not a misunderstanding. We don't have any intention of harming you. 
You are not working with her to take over the realms. No. And as she's translating this, Silas is like minor illusioning things. <laughs> he's like literally like <laughs> the movie. He's waving his arms. Like encoding like, thoughts, sort of. Like, like, I love like, it. No, no, absolutely not. Not uh, taking anything over and like, you know, doing little like kneeling and, you know, hands up praying, you know, and, and that kind of stuff. Um, Zola, give me another persuasion check. You can do it at advantage with Silas's movies. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for movies. Uh, that's a <laughs> dirty 20. A dirty 20. As you, you know, as you try to convince her, we're not trying to kill you or, you know, she sort of sits back down and you see that as she sits again, like all around, she's just a seamless transition between the earth and her body and this mud. And in fact, you know, if you were to look from another angle, it would just appear as if a mountain is her back that stretches up in front of this one. Um, she seems to get pensive, thoughtful for a moment. What do you know of our conflict? Very little, just that there's these four realms. Each has a ruler. The ruler is important to maintaining the realm. And then that the stories say that there was infighting and that uh, some people were trying to get to the veil to get to Erte. And that's where... Uh, Talron and Ivy had gone. <sighs> and hey, hey, then Neb, 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 be sure to tell her that all we know is what the evil Snow Queen told us. Well, so, and like, um, like where she knows that part. We also what Pivim told us too, and a little bit like, yeah. and uh, I've been translating all this, and I'll say back to Zola it's piecemeal for sure what we know and certainly people might be telling us things that we want to hear because we've been very lost these last two weeks which is one of the reasons that we thought just coming and talking to you directly before anybody else gets hurt was a good idea <clears throat> she takes that in Says, has Snow Queen found her scribe? She, um, no. She went to call for him in the mist and heard him there. You know this. I mean, I heard her side of it, and she... That's what she said, is that she heard him, that he said he loved her. So. Zola turns to you, each of you. Her eyes are um, green, completely. Um, a deep sort of foresty green. Um, and her pupils, a dark brown land on each of you as she tries to take you in. Um, says, I know the stories of the children of Erte. You have a choice. Snow Queen and Talran, they chose war. They left to try to destroy Zola and Flores. We only defend ourselves. For whom do you fight? Peace or war? I mean, we just want peace. And I'll kind of look at everybody like... Yes, right? peace, peace, and Silas yes. is like flashing up peace signs, <laughs> two fingers all over the place. 
that means nothing to Zola. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was nice dry there. I made it. silence feel better. <laughs> um, um, make a, let's do a group persuasion. Hmm. Um, okay. I think if everyone just wants to roll a persuasion check and we'll just see if sort of all of you can score higher than a 10. 26. 26. Ooh. Nice. 24. 21. 24. 21. Four. Four. Robin flips the bird. <laughs> I, I, um, I am uh, like, I, I assume everybody is having to say something as part of this. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we're going to go through what that is in a minute. Yeah. Well, if I hear Robin, um, yes, kind of, uh, struggling, you know, stray, straying off the path a little bit, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just going to uh, do a gentle, um, hey, Miss Robin, we might want to mention that part. Of it. <laughs> and um, that's going to be a Silvery Barb's uh, reroll. Okay. Go ahead, Robin. Don't I have to take the lower of the two rolls, or is it do you take oh, the new yeah. roll? Oh yeah. Oh wait. Or do I just take the new roll? It's the new roll. I could so be wrong. True. I have it right here. Uh, use the lower roll. Okay. Yeah, okay. All, right. All right. Never mind then. Never um, mind. Okay. I am going. Uh, I I got a twenty-seven on mine. Sure. Okay, twenty-seven. All right. Jeez. So look, we've got we've got four over twenties and one four. So hold on. <laughs> so, uh, Neb. You know, you're the one sort of doing the, the translating for this. But as she sweeps her gaze across all of you, she's trying to get some kind of sense of insight on your intentions. Um, and as a, as a group. So Robin's little role, this is a group role. You, you know, it. you carry her with you. She's just not contributing in the same way. <laughs> um, She's just trying to get a sense if if you are a team, if you are. Um, good. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go. That's her thing to compare against. Yeah, you win. Okay. She sinks. She sort of relaxes, and in fact, a couple of very brightly colored birds sort of land on her her earlobes and start picking at you know some of the vegetation as she sort of relaxes and settles in. She says. Oh. We have a chance to rewrite the stories. But the choice is yours. Well, it shouldn't just be ours. Like we're we're guests in these four worlds, right? We're we want to do the right thing, but this isn't our world and none of these are. That's but that's why we want peace. We just But yours is the crux. Yours is the seat of power the seat of the heart of our all of our worlds, which is why they want access to it. If Ivy can find the scribe, whether that is the old one or his replacement, she will have access to all the worlds and she will take over. Well, I don't know how much you believe me, but I believe that she is not interested in doing that anymore. Mm. Why do we believe that? I think she played us like a fiddle. She did look kind of strange when we were leaving. I haven't forgotten that look. I ain't trusted her the whole time. <laughs> well, think about it this way. If her goal was to just all right, she got she got her world back and now take over and we are such a crux to everything why send us away why because not she wanted us to come kill zola like she's literally like urging us on to do that she's like hey you know she tried to kill you you should go take care of that well this is interesting she hasn't really learned much about us then did she no, unless she was what was it Go ahead, Silas. I just said she was stuck in a mirror for most of it. She didn't see how we how we roll. Bruce is going to step up and face Zola. Why mm -hmm. should we believe anything you're saying right now? Um, 
Is this an intimidation? Slightly, because, I mean, Feruza stands up to her. Like, and when yeah. she speaks, she looks much bigger. Her eyes are flashing. She's sort of questioning this right now. Go ahead. Give me an intimidation roll. Let's see. That's a 15. A 15. Um, you're big. She's bigger. Uh, <laughs> bigness does not impress her <laughs> super much. Um, but it makes her chuckle a little. You're a little... <laughs> <laughs> How cute. <laughs> you know, she says, I can tell you are made of nature like I. You have strength. Draw strength from this world. Yes. I feel like it. Although I don't um, know if I belong here, but I feel something speaking to me here. He says, I have a proposition. No more death. Find Flores. And we stop the Snow Queen together. Find the scribe, whoever they may be. Bring them to our side. No more death. We find a replacement for Praxidiki. And Tyver, if need be. Are you confirming, and I'm like looking at Ned when I'm saying that, are, are you confirming that um, Talron is gone? I, I have... feel his absence. That's a lot to do. I mean, we find a scribe. These worlds, they're so big. I mean, where does one find a scribe? You can't just go to a natural, like, go to a tavern and ask around, put up a wanted <laughs> sign. I don't know. That sounds pretty good right now, actually, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I'm willing to entertain this deal, but only if the piece extends to ivy if she doesn't attack you if she's saying the truth that all she wants is to be in her world again then there should be peace between all of you i have no desire to rule tyver lorelia is my home i did not start this war as i said i am in defense well, now that we're all kind of figuring things out and understanding each other, maybe the first step is that everybody stops sending scary spider scouts to other people's worlds. Ah, I knew they found you. But to hear that you were in Tiver was bad news. Did not look good. Well... It looked uh, like you were working with assumptions. her. Tell, tell her that. Tell her that. Don't jump to assumptions. Yeah. So it sounds like just there's a lot of people who jumped to assumptions based on these old stories. And these old you, stories are old stories. We write our own stories. You were sheltering in the enemy's camp. They're only what the was I to assume? Well, you could have asked first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you see a couple of these, the chill rock, the, the stone spiders crawling over her head. One is sort of scratching behind her ear. Um, she sort of, she picks one up, looks at it lovingly. Um, they are beautiful, but not that intelligent. They still could have asked first. Anyway, <laughs> but that's, that is in the past. Now that we have confirmed that nobody's trying to kill each other. How do we contact this other ruler and how do we find a scribe? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Any advice? She's, she's, you know, she says, well, I found a door to Tyver. Or my, my, the Chirok found a door to Tyver. We could send them to find something in Etna where Flores lives, perhaps they will lead you to another door. 
uh, that'd be great as long as they don't go through. Let's not have another uh, misunderstanding about mm -hmm. uh, very, very pretty spiders who are not smart enough to say things. Hey, hey now, <laughs> now, maybe ask also, like, say that, hey, um, you know, everything in this world is trying to kill us. Does she have, like, some blessing of uh, Zola that she can bestow upon <laughs> us where we can, like, just get around free here without everything trying to to murder us? Uh, Neb, will, Neb will chuckle and, and look at Silas and say, we need to play some more of that game of yours because I think <laughs> that's, that's helping a lot. And then she'll look back at Ivy and what she'll say is, so I think finding a door is a good idea, but we should rest a little bit. Also, now that you know we're not trying to kill you and that all we want is peace, can we get your word that you're not trying to kill us and maybe help us get around a little bit? Oh. And Silas is like uh, putting up illusions of him like shaking the stinger of a mosquito or um, <laughs> oh, high fiving <laughs> spiders. She, she goes, Oh, you mean the blessing of Zola? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's actually what, what a thing. Say? Uh, Silas, apparently she's played your game as well. Um, I mean, if that's an official thing, I, I, I'm not going to say no to him. Wait, what did she say? She, <laughs> she said, oh, you mean the blessing of Zola, apparently. <laughs> that's a, that is an actual thing, yeah. Yes, I yes. shouldn't... Silas shakes his head very <laughs> said, yes, okay. Um, she, she, she sort of sees Silas and also sort of shakes, you know, with it, getting, getting the impression of this. Um, she says, all right, rest well. Tomorrow, as the sun rises, I will send you with Chirac to find a door to Etna. Okay. Convince Flores to join our side, and we shall meet in the Vale for final negotiations. That sounds perfect. A little sounds like too a plan. perfect. Love I mean, it's only perfect together. if it works out and nobody's trying to attack each other. So let's get there first. Yeah. Rest well. And she sort of melts down back into the swamp, disappearing into the cassocks. And, and Neb has been holding on to this tree the whole time. <laughs> gives the tree a little pat and says, Thank, thanks for calling her. Sorry we had to wake her up. <laughs> and then turns the tree, to everybody. The tree sort of... Mm. Maeve dips her hand in the mud and pats yes. the tree ah! and does <laughs> the blessing of a, a uh, yes. absolutely um absolutely the bandicoot blessing uh the bandicoot the, blessing the tree the tree 100 percent sort of shivers <laughs> uh with uh with delight from that i'll look over at Maeve and say yep you learn fast. You're a true bandicoot, I guess. <laughs> the tree's happy. Said that's, uh, Pivim said that's how it's done here, so, you know. The tree done. confirms. You got it done right. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so... I guess we're just bunking here? And this looks like a lot safer. Group. Seems as good a place as any. Robin is already at, like, kind of the... A good little spot next to the waterfall, like kind of, <laughs> mm -hmm. the, kind of. You've the got edge. the white noise of yeah. the water going over, oh, and she's yeah. building a beautiful sandcastle. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. It's you. You slide inside. You're relieved from the the heat of the day, which was beginning to you know dissipate. But even at night, this is a humid place. Um, mm. You know, you still got a few juicy fruit left um, <laughs> as you settle into the sandcastle. And begin to find. Is there any? Are there any last evening ritual routines here that you'd like to do as you watch the sun of Lorelia set over this distance from the top of a waterfall, sitting in a sand castle, looking over at your sweaty, sexy friends? Yeah. Would you like to say in a Harvard tank top? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, it clings to your yeah. <laughs> to your muscles. Yes, I'm gonna yeah, reach Harvard into my crop top. Yes, oh, Harvard crop top. Because it's shrinking, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you are, you are hulking out of your your university gear here. We're gonna have to yes. patch. Brand yeah. Brand yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Neb's uh, gonna pull out one of the fruit she grabbed that's fermented and be like, uh, <laughs> "Celebration." 
my god. No. Definitely. <laughs> Maeve is 100% in. I'll crack it open, anyone who wants, and I'm going to take a big bite of a fermented fruit. We all take a piece, or you give us all a piece? Is that what you I, I think she just, like, okay. like, I've been picturing the dragon fruit you're talking about, so I think she yeah. just kind of peels off a bit and takes a big bite and then like yeah. hands it around like a, a a flask of wine if or there was a, a night to celebrate yeah this is it i like it's, it it's so sweet and it has that like alcoholic kind of um kind of aura to it that bite Ooh. to it as you Ooh. as you take it down silas are you partaking as well um no, si no. silas is just gonna keep uh floating oh, his lines like listen like Hey, hey, I love the gesture, but I don't take on strange alcohol after that one night. <laughs> we were in Savannah. Um, like, it, it's fair. over with for me. I'll pull out one that's not fermented and say, well, you can still join us. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I've, I've still I've still got some water over here. I, I, I so as, I, I'm, I'm okay. buzzing already with life. As okay. this ayahuasca juicy fruit, uh, mm -hmm. you know, evening kind of commences, you all can feel feel in the, the moonlight, the stars stretching out above you as you take in this world and the jungle sounds and the, the safety of a ruler at your feet protecting you overnight. You oh. can feel not just your mind sensations, your, your, your mind expanding in this moment, but also your physical body changes and grows and feels um, as if the things you have learned and experienced are becoming one with you. With and with that, we will call this the end of this episode of Children of Verite. Ooh. Thank you all so much for a lovely episode this evening. Ooh. And please remember that you are what you believe yourself to be even more so this evening. Good night, everyone. Ooh.